Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Um, just a quick little note right off the top while I've got all of your attention. I will not be here tomorrow. This show, I don't know what they're, I think, I guess it's just going to be a rerun. I don't know. They don't tell me these things. But all I know is that I will be at the Texas GOP convention in San Antonio uh, tomorrow and Saturday. Um, so you guys, if any of you are going to that, Go, go find me. I'll be at the uh, Texas Family Project booth and the Texas Scorecard booth. Um, I'll be running around those two a lot. So come find me if you're going to be at the RPT convention. Should be uh, a lot of fun. So um, on that note, now that I've gotten that out of the way, now that this is our last show of the week, I definitely want to make sure that we talk about this, you know, as Donald Trump's 91 indictments receive just this wall-to-wall -wall coverage from the mainstream media. Just They're just salivating at the thought of Donald Trump going to prison. I just felt like, you know, let's take a look at the real corruption, uh, the real criminals at the top of this country. Of course, the Biden crime family. So there have been a couple updates that have just recently been released within the past like day on a crackhead Hunter Biden's criminal case. One of them, uh, very explosive in my opinion. Okay, so the, the first one here. The CIA blocked federal investigators from interviewing Hunter Biden's sugar brother, Hollywood lawyer Kevin Morris, during the five-year tax probe into, of course, uh, Hunter Biden's tax crimes. This is according to uh, whistleblower Gary Shapley. So I'm going to read you just kind of what the House Oversight and Judiciary Committee chairman say the whistleblower informed them of. And then I want to give you some of the details. So it says, House Oversight and Judiciary Committee chairman say the whistleblower informed them the intelligence agency stopped IRS and Justice Department investigators from interviewing Morris in August 2021. Uh, and... Morris is a this some big time Hollywood lawyer and very, very, very close buddies with Hunter, uh, constantly bails him out of trouble, pays for him, paid for the all of the 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 back taxes. I mean, it has funded Hunter Biden heavily. All right. This is according to a Thursday letter addressed to CIA director William Burns. The whistleblower informed Oversight Chairman James Comer and Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan that two DOJ officials were summoned to CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, and told Kevin Morris could not be a witness for their investigation into Hunter Biden. So here's what happened in the affidavit, according to Gary Shapley, okay? He said in 2021, Assistant U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf told their team that she and the DOJ tax attorney had just come back from CIA headquarters where they had been summoned where they had been summoned to discuss Kevin Morris. AUSA Wolf stated that they were provided a classified briefing in relation to Morris, and as a result, we could no longer pursue him as a witness. That's what it said. It is unclear how the CIA became aware that Mr. Morris was a potential witness in the Hunter Biden investigation and why agents were not told about the meeting in advance or invited to participate. It is a deviation, you think, of normal investigative processes for prosecutors to exclude investigators from substantive meetings such as this. Huh. You know what else is a deviation of normal investigative processes? For the CIA to be involved in a domestic tax fraud investigation, I would say, okay, and just like, just for some perspective here. I went to the CIA's website because I'm like, I, am I missing something? Because I don't think the CIA is supposed to be involved in these sorts of domestic matters. Straight from the CIA's, web, CIA's website, it says that they are uh, involved in global, global affairs. They're, they're investigating foreign things to, uh, to, to, to report back to the president on all things foreign related. So why in the hell is the CIA breaking the law, seemingly, to intervene in a domestic investigation. Who is the CIA asset? Uh, it's got to be one of them, right? It's got to be either Hunter Biden or his buddy Kevin Morris. Who is it? I, I, cannot, I, I, I can't think of any other reason that the CIA would summon 
would summon the DOJ tax investigator and AUSA Leslie Wolf would summon them. And then I started thinking, maybe it's making more sense as to why Hunter was involved in so many foreign companies, why he was involved in Burisma, why he was involved in CEFC. So I think America needs to know, is Joe Biden's son a CIA asset? It sounds, it sounds so crazy too, right? I mean, they've called us conspiracy theorists for so many years now. You know that if you start asking the question, hey, I don't know, maybe we should find out if Joe Biden's, if the president of the United States son is a CIA asset. It sounds crazy. It sounds Looney Tunes. <laughs> but what other questions can we ask reading this affidavit? Who's the CIA asset? Now, the whistleblower, Gary Shapley, emailed AUSA Wolf later on after he found this out and told her in this email, those of you who are watching, you can read this. Those of you who are listening on audio podcasts, I am showing you the proof right here. Okay. He said, I'm sure you understand that I have to, at a minimum, understand the issue at hand. I got to know, like, all right, you're saying that you were provided classified information that uh, led you to drop it. We can't interview this guy. You're going to need to at least explain to me what the hell's going on. And of course, Wolf responded to him. Someone will be in touch with you shortly. There it is. She said, uh, Matt McKenzie will coordinate. At a as a first step, he needs to confirm information relating to appropriate. I think that says clearance, but part of it is redacted. And then it says someone will be in touch shortly, but curiously. Later, uh, she ignored, according to Gary Shapley, she ignored multiple attempts by him to arrange the briefing. I mean, <laughs> you want to talk about some deep state shit. Give me another reason the CIA would even know that this investigation was even going on, would even be involved in this. In this is a tax fraud investigation. Give me a reason why. This, they, they, they would even be involved in that. Why would they summon a United States attorney general to tell them to back off? But then, you know, the more you think about it, the more all these other details may make a little bit more sense. Why the tax probe was going to result in no charges with this, remember the sweetheart deal? This sweetheart deal for Hunter Biden that he was about to get and all sides agreed until it went to the wrong judge. Why Hunter felt so empowered to, you know, run around as crackheads do, I guess, doing crackhead things, breaking the law, filming himself naked, going to get a gun illegally. Maybe he's like, I don't know, the CIA is backing me this whole time. Who cares what I do? I'm just going to get out of it. Now, I do think it's important to note here, Morris, this guy who was not to be interviewed by the IRS per the CIA, is the same guy who paid off Hunter's tax bills, who paid for his lawyers, who apparently bankrolled Hunter's documentary, and who spent nearly a million dollars on Hunter's crappy art. Remember when Hunter was like, oh, I think I've got to become an artist. <laughs> Here, buy my painting for a mill. This guy was paying for Hunter's crappy art. Did that money come from the CIA? I don't know. But I feel like these are questions that the American people deserve to have answered, especially given the fact that Joe Biden's DOJ is currently trying to throw his political opponent in prison while running cover for the real criminals. Here's more on Hunter Biden released today. The House Ways and Means Committee released a trove of new whistleblower documents yesterday that Republican Chairman Jason Smith says proves Hunter Biden lied to Congress in February. Oh, my gosh. I'm so shocked. If you can't trust crackheads these days, who can you trust? You know, I mean, if it's coming to the point where you can't even trust the, the crackhead who goes out and buys illegal guns, the criminal crackhead, what's the world coming to when you can't trust him to tell you the truth? From Jason Smith, for months, IRS whistleblowers have provided evidence to this committee that gives us insight into a long-running Biden family influence peddling scheme. New documents provided by the whistleblowers show that Hunter Biden repeatedly lied to Congress in his February de deposition to distance his involvement in what should be considered a clear scheme to enrich the Biden family. So he lists se several different ways. First, Hunter Biden lied about the recipient of a WhatsApp message sent with the apparent intention to threaten a business associate and demand payment. You guys recall... This was the message that Hunter Biden twice mentioned he was with his father and that his father would be very unhappy. And he was sending it to the CEFC, Chinese Energy Company chairman. All right. But in the deposition, 
Hunter sought to dismiss the message, claiming that he was either, quote, high or drunk when he sent it. And in that state, he had sent it to the wrong Henry Zhao. The wrong Zhao. I, I got, you know, he was he was someone from China and they all have the same last name, I guess, according to Hunter Biden. It was the wrong Zhao. He has a lot of Zhao's in his phone book, I guess. And it wasn't actually the Zhao that was affiliated with the CEFC. Well, phone records in front of the committee show Hunter Biden sent the message to the correct Chinese businessman by the name of Zhao, who not only was affiliated with CEFC, but knew exactly what Hunter Biden was talking about, of course. All right. The second lie referenced was when Hunter Biden denied in the deposition he was the corporate secretary for the Rosemont Seneca firm. Smith said the truth in his own handwriting. It is in front of our committee today. A document dated April 29th, 2014 reads, I, Robert Hunter Biden, hereby certify that I am the duly elected, qualified and acting secretary of Rosemont Seneca Bohai LLC, a corporation organized and existing under the laws of the state of D.E. So liar there as well. Third, Hunter Biden lied during his deposition when he said he never helped individuals obtain U.S. visas. A, an email provided to the committee between Hunter Biden and his Ukrainian business partners reads, Hunter is checking with Miguel Elman to see if he can provide cover to Cola on the visa. Now, Cola, stick with me here, was the CEO of Burisma, Nikolai Zlochevsky. They called him Cola. That's cute. Um, now, the email also said that his U.S. visa was revoked because there was great concern about his foreign travel. So great. Here we have the president of the United States son, who, by the way, we've been screaming for years here before Joe Biden even got elected, that this was a huge national security risk because of the involvement that his son and Joe had in all of these corrupt business dealings across the globe. But nobody wanted to listen. All right. Now he's in a deposition. He's lying. You guys have proof of his lies. Now we hear the CIA was running cover for Hunter Biden's tax investigation. So cool. We have all this information. What the hell is going to be done about it? How much longer are we going to sit around and allow this deep state to run the show and just not just stand back and just let these hearings continue? OK, um, just they'll, they'll go have another hearing. Don't worry. They'll have a hearing about the hearing and then they'll have another hearing about the hearing about the hearing. And then you know what? They may have some viral clip that they put on Twitter and they get lots of likes and retweets. But what the hell is actually going to be done about this? Because remember, Republicans have had the power for all this time in the House. They've had all this power. And what are they doing with it? Nothing. Hold a hearing. Release a memo. Warn Joe Biden. Oh, well, they've given him several warnings. If you don't get your act together, we might think about voting for your impeachment. Well, we might. We might think about it. We're not. I mean, we're not going to threaten to do it, but we're going to threaten you that we might think about it. And then nothing happens. And all this Hunter Biden stuff stinks to high heaven. And I wish I could tell you eventually justice will be done. I wish I could tell you, eventually we will learn the truth, but I, I, I honestly, I can't tell you something that I don't actually believe. And I don't actually believe we are ever going to find out the real truth of this matter. We know it stinks. We know it's corrupt, but we don't have the evidence to prove it. Because while we've allowed all of this to go on, they're, they're, could, they're serious about coming after us. Could they show us any further how serious they are about trying to come after us, about trying to imprison Biden's political opponent, Donald Trump. They are serious about squashing their opposition, punishing dissenters. Just today, I read another headline from theblaze.com. The DOJ targets more pro-life activists with new lawsuit. Another one. Here's another one. Here are the details. On Monday, the DOJ announced a lawsuit against two pro-life organizations, Citizens for a Pro-Life Society and Red Rose Rescue, and seven pro-life activists on allegations they violated the Freedom of Access. This is the FACE Act again. The Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act nearly three years ago. In the first incident, you guys are going to love this. This is who they're punishing in Joe Biden's America. OK, not crackhead Hunter. This, these pro-life protesters. In the first incident, the defendants allegedly entered the clinic's waiting room and encouraged pregnant women not to get abortions. Oh, no, the horror. The lawsuit claims the defendants refused to leave when asked. Police eventually arrived and physically removed the pro-life activists from the waiting room. OK, well, that's not a violation of the of the FACE Act, but. Here's, here's how they're going to manipulate it. The lawsuit alleges the protest disrupted the clinic's appointment schedule, 
forcing some women to reschedule their surgical abortions to different days. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry the inconvenience that these women had to go through to schedule a new time to kill their baby. Gosh, mm, the world's smallest violin for them. In the second incident, the defendants allegedly approached abortion-seeking women in the parking lot at a Planned Parenthood surgery center and urged them not to get abortions. The lawsuit claims the defendants obstructed the clinic and cars in the parking lot and alleges the pro-life activists refused to leave when instructed by police while they were in a parking lot. Because of those alleged actions, they say, the clinic was forced to shut down for the day, interrupting nine scheduled surgeries, which, of course, was, you know, an abortion. Let's call it what it is. It's killing a baby. So... The spokesperson for this Citizens for a Pro-Life Society said, we do not use any form of physical obstruction. There is no restriction of freedom of movement for women seeking to kill their unborn children or abortion center staff, which, I mean, I, I, I could have told you that. I, I'm, of course it's not. This DOJ under the Biden regime is manipulating this law is unconstitutional on its face, by the way, to weaponize against their dissenters, period. And if they are going after the, the former president of the United States, who is currently seeking to run against Joe Biden, why wouldn't they go after you and me? Why wouldn't they go after these pro-life protesters? And I just, I just feel like it's important to highlight how bad it's gotten, how bad the deep state really is. Because if we don't get our country back, this experiment... I hate being pessimistic, but this experiment that we call America is going to be over. And I, I'm, I wish that I were using hyperbole. I'm just really not. I mean, you were talking about the CIA blocking an investigation into a, a citizen and we don't get to know why. And that same citizen happens to be the now president's son who is lying under oath to investigators, to, the, to Congress, and what the hell is going to happen. Because as much as the left likes to talk about fascism, this is it. We are here. The call is coming from inside the house. They will not hesitate to throw us all in prison if we get in the way of their agenda while their guys get away with murder. Well, maybe not murder. I don't know if Hunter Biden's ever murdered anyone. Uh, Hillary Clinton, however... <clears throat> You know, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, all right. We've got to uh, take a quick break. We're going to be back with more. But uh, I want to thank our sponsor, the segment Relief Factor. So I wish that Relief Factor could help me um, with the pain in the ass in the White House. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that. But what it can do for you is help you if you are in constant pain, not from all the crap that's going on in the, in the country, but just from your body. So if you've got knee pain, neck pain, arthritis, whatever the case may be, uh, Relief Factor can help you. It's an all-natural anti-inflammatory. And just think about what your life could be like if you could just get out of pain, how different you would feel, all right? Try their three-week quick start. 70% of the people who buy it go on to keep ordering it. That's how many people it's working for. So the odds are in your favor. It's going to work for you. You can get it by going to relieffactor.com. That is relieffactor.com. So maybe I shouldn't do this, but every time I see um, a, a state official who is not from Texas, who is somewhere else, and I see them like making super conservative moves and just really strong moves, I like to have them on. And again, maybe I shouldn't do it because there are these other states that are out there that are kind of embarrassing us here in Texas and just going far beyond where we would go here in Texas, which we're supposed to be known as this like bastion of freedom and liberty. And there are states like Oklahoma and Florida uh, in some cases that are just completely outshining us. And maybe I should just pretend that they didn't exist, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, uh, I'm going to, uh, to, to shine a light on this because everyone needs to be following, uh, you know, what they're doing. So I want to welcome back Oklahoma State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Ryan Walters, who I last had you on, um, Ryan, to talk about your note to all of your schools there in Oklahoma. Basically, uh, my words, not yours, okay, basically telling uh, Joe Biden with his new Title IX guidance, including uh, boys in female sports bathrooms, what have, it, what have you, and you basically told them, you can tell Joe Biden to screw off because we're not doing that here in the state of Oklahoma. And so now 
You've gone even further when it comes to pushing back against woke indoctrination in Oklahoma schools. Tell everybody what you're doing there now to upset all of the uh, leftists. It was really funny, you know, and and I appreciate it so much, Sarah. Thank you for the opportunity. And, and, you know, when the left is screaming and crying and the left wing media is going crazy, I know we're right over the mark. So, (laughs) you know, we we fought back against Biden, told our districts to ignore his Title IX rewrite. We were the first State Department of Education, still at this point in time, the only one to sue Joe Biden directly on Title IX. So my agency has sued uh, Joe Biden on that, saying we will not comply. We will not work with you on this. And then now what we've done is we've gone in. And so, you know, your your textbook committees in your state have always been dominated by these bureaucrats who allow all this woke material into your classroom. Well, we set out new guidelines and said, oh, let me just be super clear. If you're not supporting American values, Oklahoma values, you, we're not going to buy your books here, period. You can go somewhere else. And it was amazing, Sarah. We had math publishers you know, kind of do this big stink in the media going, well, we're going to pull out of Oklahoma then, you know, we're not even going to apply. And I said, well, see you later. You can go <laughs> sell your textbooks in, in California or New York. But let me just get this straight. We're not talking about transgenderism in a third grade math class, like not going to happen here. So go sell it somewhere else. Don't sell it here. Right. Right. And so so um, so you are going to now ask in this rubric to determine whether or not you're going to use the books, uh, whether learning materials degrade traditional roles of men and women, promote illegal lifestyles, or neglect the importance of religion in preserving American liberties. And so I just, you know, it, it kind of shows you, they're kind of telling on themselves in in a way whenever you you mention this, the math publisher, I don't know which which book it was, but why would they throw such a fit if they're if the point of this wasn't to indoctrinate the children, right? Like why, like why would they get so upset and throw a fit and say, we're we, fine, we won't even do business with you in the state of Oklahoma if the point wasn't to indoctrinate? That's, that's exactly right, Sarah. You know, on one hand, the left says it's not happening. Right. Then on the other hand, when you say, well, listen, to be clear, if, if you're doing this, we're not going to allow it. And they go, well, then we're not even going to apply. Well, <laughs> they are. They're basically telling on themselves. And, you know, it's it's interesting you know, when you talk about education, what's the point of education? There's a few things I hear get mentioned a lot. Absolutely, we want to prepare kids for a job, no doubt about it. Absolutely, we want to make sure that kids have a quality of life when they grow up that knowledge gives them. But I'm going to tell you one other thing, Sarah. Our founders believed that an education, a good education, meant understanding the values of this country, understood what made this country exceptional, because they believed that a good education would further this great experiment known as America. And the left has taken that and not only removed that from our schools where we don't talk about our God-given rights and the understanding of our Judeo-Christian values, they've done a 180 and said, actually, you know what, you, we do want to use education to shape the minds of our country and the, and the direction of our country. And we're going to do it to create our country to be a Marxist dumpster fire. So yeah, they include it in every curriculum. First grade math, they want you to know that if you're white, you're racist. Second grade science. They want you to know that there's 84 genders. They are going to embed it in every piece of curriculum to change the course of this nation. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, people used to hear someone saying that and think like, well, that's just a conspiracy theory. They're not really doing that. There's no way that you can argue that that is not exactly what is taking place right now when you are awake. We are actually having the conversation uh, uh, in this country about whether or not we should allow elementary school students to have access to pornographic literature in school libraries. Like, <laughs> it's, like it's happening. It's really, ha- we're having that conversation. So clearly they are trying to indoctrinate our children in a very evil, sick way. Um, if you had, if you had guessed in, you know, five years ago, if someone had said, Ryan, you're going to be having to have the conversation about uh, keeping pornographic materials out of libraries. Uh, you're going to have to be having the conversation about not teaching third graders that they're racist in public schools. Like, would you have believed it? No, I mean, but it's really not a slippery slope. It, it's it's a cliff. I mean, yeah. you know, I tell people when I was a teacher a few years ago, I was a public school history teacher. You know, I remember going to a conference and having other history teachers talk about that they didn't want to teach the Declaration of Independence because Thomas Jefferson was a slave owner and the country was was racist and he was a racist. And I thought, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. And I confronted him at this conference. But, you know, now that seems tame compared to what you're seeing in some classrooms today. It's amazing how quickly that happened. And, you know, it's one of those things that when you look at it, you see the left has been very hard at work. The teachers unions, the Biden administration have moved full steam ahead 
to push this radical indoctrination on our kids. And to your point, not only are we having to fight back against it, I'm amazed, Sarah, that you have school officials that will argue for these things. I mean, I, you know, a, a PhD superintendent tried to tell me that, you know, I mean, if you're going to allow the Bible and, and, and certain, you know, books like that, you got to allow gender queer and flamer. And I go, what happens in your PhD program? Do they just do a lobotomy on you? I mean, <laughs> how can you say that gender queer is on the same plane as the Bible? It's just insane. And I, like I said, I don't know what happens when you spend that much time in higher ed, but but something's not right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't whatever you do. If you go there, don't drink the water. That's all I'm saying. Um, so I saw Jill Biden. We talked about this on the show yesterday. Jill Biden was at this teachers union summit or whatever, which sounds like I mean, no offense, you were a public school teacher, but it sounds like a drag, first of all. Um, but uh, she was speaking to them about the importance of voting for Joe Biden because public education is so important and they've come so far. And she always knew that Joe Biden would be the president that would, you know, help so much with public education. And she said, I mean, if Donald Trump gets elected, he's going to destroy public education. And I was like, girl, I already I'm already voting for him. Why are you trying to push him? Why are you trying to sell him harder? And it's just so sad that because I am a product of the public education system, I went to public schools. But the fact of the matter is public schools are not what they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I mean, they are just completely unrecognizable. And so you're doing great work in Oklahoma. But I honestly, I feel like so many Americans, especially conservatives, are just to the point where they're like, great, blow the whole thing up. Yeah, you know, I want to say thanks, Joe Biden. You know, actually, Donald Trump is going to destroy the teachers union. <laughs> There's no ifs, ands, or buts about yes. it. He's going to destroy the Department of Education. Like, yeah, I cannot wait to vote for the man. You know, I, I'm fired up. I cannot wait for those things to happen. There's nothing that could help our schools more than getting rid of teachers unions and getting rid of the Federal Department of Education and putting parents back in the driver's seat, bringing transparency and accountability and running these Marxist leftists out of our schools. This is what we need to happen. And yes, you see how the unions are all, they are mortified at the thought of a second term of President Trump because he will destroy the teachers union and he will put our schools back on track by embracing families and abolishing that Department of Education once and for all. Yeah, amen. Oh, oh and hold on, moment of silence for Randy Weingarten. Okay, that's enough. Um, <laughs> Ryan, I appreciate you. All of your hard work, I appreciate you joining me today. Again, I, you know, you're embarrassing us here in the state of Texas where we don't even have any semblance of school choice. We're still trying to fight with, you know, the, the money to follow the students. And we're still trying to fight porn in our life. I mean, we're all screwed up here in Texas. So uh, you're embarrassing us. I don't yeah, I mean, hey, I love the competition with Texas, but I'm pulling for you. We've got to get school choice in yeah. Texas and we need to have it in every state. So we're pulling for you guys. Thank you. We appreciate it. And uh, come back soon. Absolutely. I would love to. All right. Thank you, sir. See you soon. All right. So um, we uh, we've got Another guest coming here after the break to talk more news of the day. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. So Patriot Mobile, those of you who don't know, Patriot Mobile. Actually, I'm going to see Patriot Mobile at the uh, the Texas GOP convention because they are a sponsor not only of the uh, GOP convention, but so many conservative causes. They are a leader in putting their money where their mouth is. They're fighting sex trafficking on the front lines at the border with Yakubuyans. Uh, they're flipping school boards to conservative members where they used to lean, you know, heavily leftist school boards. They are doing tremendous work. And the way that they're able to do that is that they offer dependable nationwide coverage for your cell phone. So you have access to all three major networks. All right. You're, you can get the same service that you have now. But instead of paying big mobile and they're going to go and spend some of that money on, you know, all of these left leaning causes, they're actually using that. They're going to take a portion of your bill and they are going to fund, of course, causes that you agree with and believe in. If you're still with big mobile, you're actually funding like Planned Parenthood and organizations that want to take your guns away. And so don't do that. All right. Go to Patriot Mobile. They've got plans for everyone. You can keep your phone or you can buy a new one. Um, I'm telling you, they've got, you can customize it however you want. And they're probably going to save you money as well when you do it. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Sarah. Get free activation when you use the offer code Sarah over at patriotmobile.com slash Sarah. Welcome to the show. Matthew Marsden, Blaze TV contributor and actor and producer extraordinaire. Um, so you'll love this, Matt. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I, I've got, I've got my notes here, but I want to read this headline from Yashar Ali, who I do follow on Twitter. I will, I will be fair. Mm-hmm. We do follow each other on Twitter, but he is a leftist, and mm-hmm. sometimes his his crazy leftism just, just comes out. All right, news. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito's New Jersey beach house had an appeal to heaven flag flying outside of it last summer. This was two years after Alito's main residence in the D.C. area had an inverted flag flying outside of it. The appeal to heaven flag, you're wondering why this is news, okay? The appeal to heaven flag was carried by rioters at the Capitol on January 6, 2021, also known as the pine tree flag. It dates back to the Revolutionary War, but largely fell into obscurity until recent years and is now a symbol of support for former President Donald Trump for a religious strand of the Stop the Steal campaign and for a push to remake American government in Christian terms. So he admits the flag was like a revolutionary war flag. Okay. It's historical, but that's not what it means right now. So Samuel Alito must be a a president Trump supporter. And we are to shame him because he is flying an appeal to heaven flag that some people may or may not have have held during the riot on January 6th. Like how many, how many mental gymnastics do you have to do to be like, and this is why it's evil. I'm sure, you know, if you flipped up their heads, they'd have like spaghetti in there because it's all like all messed up. So, I mean, look, the the fact of the matter is, and if you know any intellectuals and and I know quite a few intellectuals, they get very nerdy about these kind of things, right? They get Mm -hmm. very nerdy about finding these things. They're like, oh, I'm going to take this obscure flag and I'm going to fly it. This isn't news either. I'm going to fly it. But I mean, like, you know what else they were carrying at, at the January 6th thing? The American flag. Right. You know, so is that like, oh, look, there's oh, a conspiracy. No. Oh, no. Oh. oh, that was flown by January 6th rioters. You can't, you can't fly that. Gavin Newsom is flying it over the capital of California. That means he's really for Donald Trump. Listen, listen. Volkswagen is made in Germany. I know some things that happened in Germany a long time ago. Oh, that were really you drive bad. a Volkswagen. Must be a Nazi if you drive a Volkswagen. Uh-huh. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You drive a Nissan. <laughs> I'm just I'm sa- not going like, there. How I'm not far, going there. How far are we going to extend this stupidity? I w- okay, I want to play a clip for you. This is uh, Representative Dan Goldman, who actually, he's saying this unironically. I wish this was a joke. He is literally calling for Samuel Alito to recuse himself from any sort of January 6th case because he has this flag in his house. Watch. If Justice Alito does not recuse himself from the Trump immunity case and the Fisher January 6th case, he will do irreparable damage to the Supreme Court and Chief Justice Roberts must step in and make sure that he does not have any role in deciding these cases because the entire legitimacy of the Supreme Court will be eviscerated. I hate everything. I hate everything. Oh my gosh. How do you ever wonder, like, is he this dumb or is that just by design? Is he dumb or is he cunning? Does he know what he's doing or is he retarded? I think they kn- he knows what he's doing and he's retarded. I-, I think it's both because look, the truth of the matter is they're trying to stop Trump in any which way yes, they can. Clearly. We also know that they've gone on and on and on about the Supreme Court, that, you know, you know Trump this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but apart from when actually the Supreme Court sides with them, and then it's like crickets, right. right? Which has happened several times, actually, since the new justices, the Trump justices have been there. But you don't hear about that. But now, oh no, because the truth is they want to take over the Supreme Court. They want to weaponize every aspect of the government. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that they don't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I also think that they are just a little bit salty about the fact that this particular flag. um, I mean, it was again, it dates back to the Revolutionary War. And I guess it was it had the flag with a white ground and a tree in the middle to be a signal by which our vessels may know one another. But it also uh, sort of has served as a call for a more biblical centered government which you know the left can't stand. They don't want 
They don't want that. They don't want a biblical. Clearly, we've got like the CIA interfering in uh, Joe Biden's son's investigation. And I don't know, he might be a CIA asset. And we've got like there are 91 indictments against Donald Trump and uh, the president's son, nothing. So I would say that they, uh, they don't really want to turn back to biblical values. Well, the other thing is, is the country's in a complete mess right now. So it's almost like, don't you have anything better to do right. than to get all bent out of shape about a flag? And no, look, look uh, no, no, they don't actually. They don't. Do they don't they? want like, to okay. draw attention to the crises that they created. So no, instead, no, they'll no. bitch about a flag. I mean, it's 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 an utter complete disaster. Right. I mean, yeah. everything that they do, everything that they or don't do. I, I do wish that they wouldn't do anything because I always think that when they don't do anything, the country is yeah. better off. Yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. But they are. I mean, it's. That's why whenever they threaten to shut down, I'm like, like great. Yes. This is awesome. Please shut down. Don't ever go back to work. I love gridlock. Yeah. I, lo I love congressional gridlock. I don't want you guys to do any more than you have already done. Please, for the love of God, we don't, we can't take any more. Um, so I, on the topic of Trump, I want to, uh, I want to, let's, let's play some of this, the gathering of people outside in preparation for his rally in the Bronx. Look at this. Mm -hmm. It just goes on and on and on. This is like hours and hours and hours before the rally is even going to start. And this line, I'm, I'm trying to like keep talking because I want to keep showing you the Amazing. length of this line. Oh my God, there's 30 more seconds in this video? Look at this. But this shocks no one, right? This shocks no one because we all know. it kind of shocks know. me. In no, New but York? I mean, in New York, yeah. But the truth of the matter is, is we know that people have been behind Trump. We knew, I'm not going to say it again, but we knew that they were behind him last time. Fortification that happened, yeah. Uh, but look at that. Wow. Look at all those white supremacist haters being violent. But I... But I, yeah, th this is, by the way, those of you who are listening on audio podcasts, that they, we, they, he just finished showing the clip. That's how long it took to show the line of people. Um, but there was a, it seemed to be a pretty good mix of colors in there. Yeah, because, they, because we all know that. Hello. We all know it's not what the left says it is. Right. 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 We right. know that. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, like you said, it, it's, it's a little bit surprising because of New York, but at the end of the day, they're having a massive crime wave. So, yeah, that's true. So then here's, here's what I can't quite, it makes me a little bit unsettled. Okay. Because I see stuff like that and I'm like, this, it feels good. It, like I, I feel good after I watch it. Surely we're going to win. Um, but then I see the polls and then, but then I'm like, can you trust the poll? I don't know if I can trust the polls. It just, like, I just, I proceed with caution because that is where it's at, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't go and show up hours and hours and hours in advance if you're not prepared to go and vote on November. But do you trust the system? Do you trust the polls and do you trust the system? I don't trust either one of those. And then I'm left like, how many more is it going to take so that we, I mean, we're clearly going to have to not only get everyone out to vote, but also make sure that we account for all of the fortification that we know is going to happen to make sure that we're still above those numbers. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's very sad that we're in this situation. I feel the same as you. I think we've both said it multiple times that I don't trust the system at all. I don't think we've done enough to um, eliminate voter fraud. No. Uh, the well, there are some places like the state of Michigan. Um, I, my my Blaze Originals series uh, episode is going to be coming out soon. We went to Michigan and you will be shocked when you hear what the state of Michigan has done to make voter fraud easier. So it's not even that some states aren't doing enough. It's that they are actually trending in the opposite direction. Yeah, they're treasonous. Flying. But they're, but yes. they're treasonous. They're, they're treasonous. They, they should be I know. prosecuted for treason. But it won't. I mean, yes, I agree with you. But it's like, but it won't matter. Who's going to prosecute them? Well, uh, you know, look, I think, and everyone watching this knows this, that, that Trump, when he gets in, and if this is a legitimate election, and I don't care if they come and lock me up, right? Because I'm going to contest it because you can't look at that if it doesn't go our way, right? If it doesn't go our way, everybody knows that, that, that this Muppet is not running the country. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows he's not, he shouldn't win. He shouldn't have won last time. I don't believe he won last time. Tell me if you agree. I do not believe that he won last time. No. 
right? So here's the problem. Trump is going to take an absolute blowtorch to the government when he gets it. He has to. He has to, and they all know He didn't last time. He didn't, but I I I think think he's learned his lesson. Yeah, and You know, in the 91 indictments, maybe by like the 33rd, he was like, yeah, you know, they were out to get me. Maybe I should have. Maybe when I did stuff and they just ignored it, that that was a thing. Yeah. So I think that what he'll do is he'll go through and he'll fire a bunch of people. It'd be great. He'll be like, fired. (laughs) Uh, and, And he'll fire a lot of people. So if you're in those agencies, if you are in government, what are you thinking right now? This has to stop. Like, we have to stop him. Yeah. They did it last time. What do you think it's going to be like now? Right. Like, he's like, no F's given. Right. See, I didn't swear. I'm becoming a better person. Oh. See? What he means is he's becoming a better person than me. That's what he, that's what but they're mean. never going to stop, right? They're not going to stop. So are they going to cheat? Of course they're going to cheat. Yeah. Are they going to try and throw something else at him? Of course they are. Is there going to be some kind of drama before now and November? A hundred percent. Yes. And we all know it, right? Yeah. But we're going to see it because everybody's waiting for it to happen. They're not like, I think because of COVID, people have stopped thinking of things like a conspiracy theory anymore. And they're, they're looking and going, okay, well, I'm going to wait for this crisis to happen. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Be on the lookout for that. I hear that they're talking about the bird flu now, and I'm like, oh, great, cool, just in time. Um, all right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back with more, but we want to thank our sponsor, Flying Ace Spirits. So Flying Ace Spirits is partnering with Folds of Honor, and Folds of Honor, since 2007, has provided life-changing scholarships to the spouses and children of America's fallen or disabled in combat. And then in 2023, they actually extended that to include the families of fallen first responders. They've awarded like 51,000 scholarships, more than $200 million so far. And so what Flying A Spirits is doing is they are partnering with Folds of Honor and they are going to sponsor four scholarships awarded quarterly this year. So they are asking for your help. So you can donate today. What I suggest is that you just go buy some of their awesome liquor. And so you will be donating and you will also get to drink. And that's really the best of both worlds, honestly. So you can go to flyingacespirits.com or you can scan the QR code on the screen if you're watching this. And uh, when you purchase a bottle of Flying Ace, you'll also be donating to Folds of Honor. Make sure you use the promo code unfiltered and you will get free shipping on every order. That is flyingacespirits.com, promo code unfiltered. So this is this is how bad Joe Biden's America is, okay? Even Nikki Haley has said that she is going to vote for Donald Trump. Now she has previously said he's not qualified to be president. But I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't know who got a hold of her. I don't know if she had a change of heart. I actually don't believe anything that Nikki Haley says. Uh, I don't think that she is like a woman of convictions. I think she just follows the money. So I have no idea. But I'd like to believe that that's how bad it's gotten, that even a rhino such as Nikki Haley is going to vote for Donald Trump. Here's a little bit of her uh, expressing that watch. So on these issues, these national security critical issues that you've described today, who do you think would do a better job in the White House, Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on, Nikki. Pack out your tongue. Voter, I put my priorities on a president who's going to have the backs of our allies. Just say it. And Donald hold our Trump. enemies to it. Good account. grief, woman. Just say it. So hard for her. Secure the border. She's so pain. She is oh, pained no by this. Excuses. Okay. A president who would support capitalism and freedom. Okay. Just say Donald Trump. A president who understands we need less debt, not more debt. She's trying so hard not to. Trump has not been perfect on these policies. I've made that clear many, many times. It was a binary answer. So I will be voting for Trump. And it took about one minute to get that actual answer out. It was either one or the other, and it took her that long to explain. Well, Just was, say it. She was trying really hard to figure out how to walk her way out of that so that she didn't have to answer that she was voting for Trump. You know that's like? Have you ever gone to your kids like, hey, who made that mess yeah. in the living room? And they'll go, well, 
uh, I, I was it, the, the blur and the dog and the and the, can you just tell me was it you? Yeah. Please tell me was it you? That's yeah. all I want to know. That's yeah. all I want to know. I'm I'm not going to punish you if you tell me the truth. Uh, well, the. the Oh, what? We, we are we have such crappy candidates. It just but like, why does it pain her so much? Because because she's saying, well, we need someone who's going to secure our border, who is going to handle foreign conflict, uh, you know, competently, who is go who believes in capitalism. And like she's saying all the things that we know that Donald Trump is going to do. So why does it pain her so much to just say he's the guy? Because they're full of pride. They're, they're so full of pride. They can't, but they can't just go, I oh, oh, can't say it. Can't say it. Even though I have no idea who was ever going to vote for that woman. I mean, maybe her husband. Don't be silly. Well, she did allegedly cheat on him, so he might still He's hold not going to vote for her. He might still hold a grudge about that. <laughs> I, know, I think we have at least one person in the building whose name I won't say on air. Say it. Who works. No, I won't. You better say I it. I can't. I'm not going to dox him because he's not a, like, he's, he's, he's not on camera. He's behind the scenes. And Oh, okay. He is a big Nikki Haley supporter. And you know what? I, like, they haven't fired him for that yet, which... Great job, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take a, a little break before I, get, before I get in trouble. We'll be right back. So Joe Biden had a press conference with the Kenyan president and uh, went about how you would imagine that it would go. And I would like to uh, just play Joe Biden once again. Calling Kamala Harris the president. Watch. Two years ago, our nation's first black vice president, President Kamala Harris. Now you probably, he, well, I think he had uh, marbles in his mouth, so you couldn't quite understand him. But he, he said two years, two years ago, uh, the first vi black vice president, President Kamala Harris. Huh? This is not the first time he's done that. It's not the... This is not the second time he's done that. I don't even think this is the third time he's done that. That's how many times he has called Kamala Harris the president of the United States, which honestly, at this point, I don't know which one is scarier, Joe or Kamala. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they're, they're both terrible. I'm just surprised he didn't say Obama. Because that's the truth. Well, yeah, right? that's who's actually calling the shots, I'm sure. And then there was this, I mean, I could have gone through so many different clips here from this, just from this one press conference, but let's play one more. I, I'm unclear what surprised Joe Biden, but something very much surprised him as they were ending the press conference. Watch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he do that? <laughs> this, this concludes the press conference. Thanks, everybody. No, play it one more time. No, please, please play it one more time. Oh. <laughs> you actually see the, um, there he goes. You see the camera jerk because everyone's like, what? Why is he, why, why is he jumping? <laughs> Somebody's got to make a mashup of that. Whoa. Sorry. Whoa. You star whoa, you startled me. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> whoa. 